first thing I want to do is if you hate churn, clap. Okay? If you love growth, clap. I just like to start with people clapping for me, so I appreciate that. So yeah, I'm, my, my name is TJ Waldorf. I'm the VP of Global Marketing for a company called INAP now. Um, previously was, was with uh, Single Hop. So um, I'll tell you a little bit about that, but really my focus, and we've heard a lot of themes already today, but uh, my focus is how Single Hop has used, had used uh, NPS as a, as a hub for growth and, and the customer gauge platform to do that. And uh, eventually and ultimately how we're bringing that into the new business, which is INAP. So I've got some NPS scores up here. I want you just to call out some names and who, who do you think these are for? Who scores are these? Just yell it out. Okay. Tesla? I think I heard Apple. Last one. Maybe a little bit less familiar, but... Uh, Warby Parker, um, what do all of these companies just have in common? Even if they're different sizes, they're in different businesses, what do they have in common? A maniacal focus on the customer experience. That's really what it's about, right? It's putting the customer at the center of everything they do. And I know, you know, we hear, uh, you know, a lot of companies in their value statements and their mission statements, they say, we're customer centric, we're customer centered, all this stuff. But do they really put that into practice and do they operationalize it? That's really what it, that, how, how you make NPS a hub for growth. So that's what we're going to get into. So just a quick timeline here, just so you understand. So Single Hop and INAP both, we are in the, uh, the data center and managed cloud business. And what that really effectively means is we power parts of the internet, right? If you go onto a social networking site or you're playing a game online, um, we are, in many cases, the infrastructure that's powering the delivery of those applications. And it sounds probably pretty boring uh, compared to some of the other companies, but it's really important. And uh, you know, the big thing that we tell customers is that a lot of uh, IT organizations spend roughly 70% of their time just keeping the lights on, just making sure servers are up and available and that they can deliver their applications to their customers. We take that heavy lifting um, and it's somewhat the mundane busy work of keeping the lights on off their plate so they can focus on innovation and they can focus on their mission and their customers. So that's really what that's about. Single Hop was founded in 2006. Uh, we started our partnership with Customer Gauge in 2011. So it's been ongoing for quite some time. Uh, that's when the NPS program was kicked off. I joined Single Hop in uh, December of 2014. And the, the interesting thing that I noticed when I came on board, I had a little bit of experience with NPS, not Customer Gauge specifically, was that while the platform was in place, um, you know, the organization knew that we were doing it. There just wasn't the energy maybe that there was around the program when it first, first kicked off. So I saw it as a big, big opportunity uh, to get my arms around and really kind of uh, rally the troops around what we were doing as it relates to the MPS program and to ultimately drive growth, right? That's, that's the point of this. Um, 2005, so right as, about, as I was coming in, you know, the company kind of made a decision to move up market, so dealing with different customer profiles. Um, fast forward to 2017, the work that we had put in to the MPS program and really putting the focus on it, making sure that it had top-down buy-in from the CEO um, was critical. We took um, our churn and effectively cut it in half over that period of time, which was um, an exciting and, and, and fun project to work on, but more importantly, it was impressive to be able to look at the business and say, we put focus on this and we have this impact. And then in uh, to this year, 2018, in February, we were acquired by my new company, INAP. Um, and one of the things that, that you know, when, when the press release went out about the acquisition, um, it doesn't specifically say it in here, but, but a part of this was we had the, um, the operational discipline around customer management and uh, customer you know, NPS and, and, and customer uh, satisfaction that this was something that we could bring into the new organization. At a glance, so single hop pre-acquisition, roughly 3,000 customers, about 48 million in revenue. We had five data centers 
Um, so that's five physical buildings where we can help customers with their infrastructure. Um, and then and then at a you know at a at our peak 74 NPS and we've we've maintained kind of with a little bit of margin there uh, around that number. When you look at the combined companies and this should actually say 10,000. So if you take the 7,000 customers from INAP and the 3,000 from Single Hop, we're roughly 10,000 customers, 56 data centers, 281 million um, in revenue. And I, I got a lot of questions when I put NPS coming soon when I was going back and forth prior to this event. And the reason that I say that is that um, INAP as a business hadn't had NPS in place. And we still don't have NPS in place yet, but it's a priority for us. And talking with Andrew and with Evan and, and the team, uh, this is something that we're looking at for 2019. How do we get the businesses operating together um, and running this program like we did with Single Hop so that we can have a similar uh, result? This is just a map for anybody that cares. This is where we're at across the uh, our data centers are across the globe. But why am I really here? Because I think if I'm sitting in that seat, any of those seats, I come to these events because my, my hope, my goal would be I show up and I learn something that's very tangible and that I can leave with, right? And I can go back to my office, not tomorrow, tomorrow Saturday. Um, I can go back to the office on Monday and start to kick off a process that puts some of these things in place. So we're gonna talk about three ways uh, a little bit of a listicle here, but three ways that NPS acts as a hub for growth. So a 360-degree 360 view of the customer relationship, and that is both, the way that I think about it at least, is that's both internally, so getting your, your, your company first and foremost focused on that overall relationship, um, but then also the visibility that this creates inside the customer account. One of the things that we fairly, probably a year and a half ago, we recognized was that we were, the way that we were deploying our NPS surveys was pretty single threaded. And what I mean by that is that if our primary contact is the IT administrator, then we were kind of only surveying that one person, right? So we were getting a very thin view of that overall relationship, which is what NPS is all about um, relative to uh, you know, transactional surveys that you send a customer after you close a case or a ticket or anything else, NPS is really supposed to give you um, a holistic view of the relationship. So this is not our dashboard, but our dashboard looks similar. This is dummy data. Um, the, the first presentation with Lou from, from Black Duck and Tim, you know, it, it's incredible to see the buy-in at that level for something like this because my experience, what I believe, is that if you don't have top-down CEO buy-in to do this right, it's very, very difficult, very difficult. So if you're not a CEO, but you want to put something like this in place, the first thing you should probably do is have a conversation with your CEO or somebody at that level to help them understand the impact that it can have because you need that buy-in. Um, and if you've had different experiences, that's great. I'd love to hear it, but from my experience, Getting CEO buy-in to make this an important thing inside the company is, is how we really got it to work and work in a time horizon that made a lot of sense for us. So a couple things I want to point out, you know, when we, and again, some of these are specific to our business, but one of the nice things about the customer gauge platform, and I was having a conversation earlier about some of the differences between, you know, doing this in a spreadsheet versus doing it in a platform like customer gauge or other, is the granularity that you can create from a segmentation perspective. So f for us, that's, it's important to understand um, by customer spend, what's the NPS score, by uh, geography, what's the NPS score, maybe by language, because we support multiple languages, um, the tenure of the customer, you can really go down the list, right? Um, because that's where you can create action. Um, an action that's relevant to a particular segment of customers. Because I think if you, this goes for marketing, this goes for sales, anything else, if you just try to say broad brush, I'm gonna treat everybody the same, I think you're gonna have a more difficult time actually creating uh, the outcomes and the results that you wanna see. So it's important that you get in and you really segment so you can understand how this is all working uh, down, to, down to some of these items here. We had, you know, we have the dashboard, we have all that. Um, 
but on a weekly basis, we'd also, we also get a report that goes out to the entire management team to, to see here's the, you know, here's the activity, here's who we're surveying, here's the responses that we're getting. Are we, is our response rate where it should be? Do we need to change something in there? That's something that we've over time really honed in on to make sure that you know, we're getting a representative sample of customers replying. And it, and it ends up uh, in those discussions, and we, we do weekly management meetings as well, and it ends up in those discussions where you can have meaningful and pointed conversations around, you know, we're, we're doing great in this segment, maybe not so well in this segment, so let's focus there and let's get the right people involved, right? If it's product related or if it's pricing related or support related, whatever it might be, it really gives you a, a compass, so to speak, on where to focus and put your energy and effort. I'm, a, I'm somewhat of a Jeff Bezos fanboy, so you'll see that a couple of times throughout the, set, through the, through the slides, but full disclosure, we don't actually keep an empty chair in our meetings, but it's a concept, right, that when you're, that when you're talking about um, the NPS results and you're talking about the things that you need to improve, Pretend, pretend that you've got you know an empty chair in the room, and then that that's the customer, because it's so easy, and it, we all do it. If you say that you don't do it, you're probably not telling the truth. But it's so easy for us to get into our own heads, and into this really internal how you know how are things working for us versus what do we really need to do to impact the customer, right? So uh, if you don't do this, even if you don't have a chair that's empty, I encourage you to, to keep that. Uh, keep that top of mind. So if you build a great experience, customers will tell each other about it. Word of mouth is very powerful. There's, based on the applause at the beginning of the, uh, the un, uh, unprompted applause, we all believe this, right? That the most effective, uh, cost-effective way, uh, an efficient way to drive demand is to get our customers telling other people about it, telling other businesses about what we do. Um, and again, if you have metrics to support otherwise, I'd love to see them. I've never seen them before. It's, you know, it's uh, X times cheaper to acquire a new customer or sell to an existing customer, but also getting those existing customers to tell others about what you're doing is, is the, uh, the most cost-effective way to do this. All right, so creating that, we talked about creating that holistic view, right? It's, it's first... Uh, getting the data, it's getting that visibility to understand what's going on. Uh, that's the first step. And then we talk about, uh, or the next piece is this idea of a closed loop system fueled by action. And fueled by action is probably the most important couple words up here because it's, it's one thing to just collect the data, which you've, you've heard that theme uh, today, but it's incredibly important and in my mind the crux of this sort of program to begin with is actually do something about it. So a couple examples, um, we, this is, uh, these are NetSuite uh, cases, but a couple examples. So you can, you can operate fully out of uh, a platform like Customer Gauge, or you can tie that into your existing systems, whether it's something like NetSuite or Salesforce or ServiceNow, or you know, I don't know all the, all the different APIs, but you can tie it into how you operate, uh, you know, how your teams operate and engage with customers. So what, what we do to kick off that, uh, that action is we trigger a case, what we call a case inside of our CRM, which is uh, NetSuite. And that's, that case is tied directly to a customer success manager that gets an alert that says, go do something about this, right? And we've got, um, we've got different levels of action kind of outlined for them based on what the score is, right? So we actually reply to all of them. It doesn't matter if it's a 10 or if it's a zero, we reply to all of them just in different ways. And the, the speed at which we reply is a little bit different and all that. But it's important that you do, when you get that score, you're doing something with it immediately. And so that's, that's what we do. That's the first one up top there. That's the individual task. But then you also have, uh, this is an email that I get and a couple of our other managers on a weekly basis that shows us, or this is on a daily basis, excuse me, that shows us any of the cases that were triggered by the NPS uh, survey that have not been addressed. So now I know who I need to go talk to because they haven't addressed the NPS case, right? 
Um, sometimes it's an easy conversation, sometimes it's a, a little bit more of a difficult conversation. But it's important to have that visibility too, that you know, it, it's easy to say, well, we're gonna create a case and you know, Bob or Susie, the CSM, they're gonna just take care of it because I trust them and I love them and I know that they're gonna do it. It's not always the case. So if you create a mechanism where you can go back and follow up, it's, it's gonna help me as a manager, but more importantly, I think it's just gonna reinforce and con continue to reinforce that this is an important program that everybody's paying attention to and that we need to do something with. The other thing that comes out of uh, those cases and surveys is something that, we've, uh, that we call red flag mechanism, or red flags. And if uh, this is basically how do we get out in front of churn? Um, in our business, if somebody says, if somebody comes to me today and says, I'm going to cancel our services, the chance that they've already moved their applications or their software someplace else is very, very high. So it's very difficult for me to get them to, to come back around, right? So our job is to get out in front of churn to make sure that we know there's any sort of dissatisfaction coming and that this is flagged so that we can get the entire team involved. I don't, I don't expect uh, you know, our frontline CSMs or CSRs to manage this entire process, to, to take it from we know we've got a detractor and, uh, and I personally need to save them from leaving. I don't, I don't believe in that, I don't think it works. They need to know and understand that they've got a full team of people that can have a conversation with the customer, um, that can get involved all the way up to the CEO. And that's where the teamwork comes into play. I don't know how they got this upside down, but the, the analogy here is the opposite, right? If you can keep the team on the same page and, and rowing in the same direction, understanding how important this, this is, the truck wouldn't be upside down. The truck is churn, let's call it that, right? So let's, the person in the middle, that's the CEO, get the CEO's buy-in. Um, you know, I'm having regular dialogues with our CEO if uh, we feel something's not going in the right direction with a particular customer, he's on the phone. He's calling them, right? Because we're all in, we all have the same objective is to grow the business and it's to reduce churn and, and grow faster, right? That's what you always want to grow faster. Number three is taking improvement for the customer seriously. And I think that I have, uh, you know, and th this, is, this is a conversation that I've had inside of our company, but it is, um, if you're not really putting the energy in focus and you're not really taking it seriously, it's very, very difficult to make the impact that you wanna have. So that's fine, that sounds, that sounds great. Obviously you should take it seriously, but what does that mean? It means everything from customer service and support to your products, to your pricing and, and your strategy. So uh, that's, that's why it's really critical for us to segment in the way that we do because we know which of these areas that we need to impact the most. We know that if it, we're having issues with support all the way down to a particular support team, the way that our support structured um, for part of our business is that we've got teams that, are, that own a, a group of customers, right? And then that group of customers is replying to the survey and we know that this particular team has an NPS score of X, another team of Y. So we know where to focus down into those individual service teams so that we can, that we can apply um, whatever sort of pressure that we need to. Products is an area, especially when it comes to um, product development that candidly we struggled a little bit with getting the NPS program kind of ingrained into our, like our development teams and helping them really understand how important this was and how they could, they could impact, right? So if it was, um, you know, the way that our, that our invoices were coming out or if it's the way that a customer has to navigate from a certain part of the portal to another, we can show that because it's a product segmentation inside of the platform. And then we can go and I can sit down and have a conversation with our head of development to say, listen, I'm showing you right here, this is the voice of the customer, what we need to improve. Um, and it's not me, the annoying marketing guy or sales guy coming to them and just giving him my opinion, right? It's, I've got data here, help me help you, right? The same goes with pricing. I think this is an area that we're, you know, no matter what business it, that you're in, you're always, you're, you're trying to make sure that you've got the optimal price for the value that you're providing and everything else. And that changes over time, right? The, the price that we're charging for a certain service five years ago 
value-wise could have been spot on. But over time, new products and services come into the market, uh, you know, competitive landscape changes. And if you're not watching that, then you're, you, you could just find yourself kind of out of the mix and have a harder time. And then lastly, and this kind of, this kind of ties everything together, is just your overall strategy. I mentioned earlier that when I, when I first came into Single Hop, they, they had started to make this decision to move up market. So, you know, dealing with maybe a smaller customer size, um, you know, 2011, 12, 13, and realize that, hey, we are keeping these customers in this other segment longer. They're paying more, they're churning less. Um, maybe there's opportunity there for us to put more focus in that particular space, right? So that was another area that from a strategy standpoint, um, having that data, uh, having the conversation around what do we need to do at this point in this stage of the business was really, really important. And then the, you know, this is, this is going to be kind of part, this is a tactic as far as that grow period goes. Y taking the successes that you're seeing and pushing those out into, uh, into your marketing, into customer conversations, referrals, everything else is just going to bring that attention to your business so that you can, uh, can kind of leverage the success that you're seeing and drive more revenue and drive more growth from referrals, from, um, from customers, maybe adding more business, business under your roof, so on and so forth. And that is the three ways that putting NPS in place and, and having it act as a hub for growth can help you grow your business. Thank you. A little bit, yeah. I think that the, you know, we had to kind of revive with the CEO. I, you know, that's something I mentioned a few times. We kind of had to revive that focus with the CEO so that it became an important part of the culture throughout the organization. And could we have done it without that? Uh, you know, his active involvement, maybe. I just think that it would have been taken a lot longer and been uh, more challenging. Yeah. So what did you do to convince the CEO? How did you get that buy-in? We showed, we, he had stopped paying attention to the data to begin with. So it was, it was bringing that back to the forefront and saying, look, we're, we're seeing tangible results in this part of our business. We're struggling in this part we need to do something about it and I need your help as a CEO to help me get this up throughout the organization. So I think it was, you know, for us, it was a matter of just kind of, again, giving it energy again and, and bringing it to the surface of, of what we were trying to do. When you reach out to those customers after they fill out a survey, yep. and have, you know, it's six and lower ratings. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about what the playbook is there? Yeah. Yep. So uh, fundamentally it's, it's having a conversation. It's reaching out, um, you know, letting them know that, hey, you, you, your voice is being heard. Um, we're clearly not coming through for you in the way that, that we need to be. Um, help us understand how we can get better for you, right? And we do, we've got kind of a, um, a two-level question. So we ask the basic NPS question, but then also ask, you know, what's the driver? So if you score us low, what's the main driver? If you score us high, what's the main driver? And so that gives us a head start going into that discussion. If they say it's product related, then we start off there. But um, it's really just having a discussion. Then we do have a way for the CSM to get that information back into our CRM so that there's this kind of this feedback loop and cycle. Great. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Thanks.